Probably in no other programming language, multi-threading is so much talked about, often confusing and even a controversial topic as it is there in Python. I believe you must have heard about terms like there are no multi-threading in Python, there is something called GIL which is Global Interpreter Lock in Python and because of that multi-threading is not possible. Well, let's talk about each and everything related to multi-threading in Python in this video and after this video you will clear all your confusions about multi-threading in Python programming language. So let's go ahead and start. So welcome everyone to my channel and in this video I am gonna cover these five topics. First, I will prove you that Python threads are real threads. What is the meaning of real thread? Real thread means that for every Python thread you create a kernel label thread each created. We will see that. We will also see how we can create threads in Python. We will talk about the famous or infamous GIL global interpreter lock. We will talk about multiprocessing in Python in brief because this video is not about that but I will cover multiprocessing to tell you what you can do with that and then at the end we will talk about what is the object oriented way of creating Python threads. Okay. So to use Python thread you need to import threading and from threading you need to import thread okay this time i am importing so that i can put some sleep in the functions this is not required for using the threads but just to show you something and i am importing threading because i am using some functions of threading which we are gonna see in a moment now we can create a thread by using this built-in thread class how let's see but before we go ahead and create a thread you all know that each thread starts its execution with a function so we must create a function which can be an entry point function for our thread so let's go ahead and create a function called thread function i named it as thread func i am printing a statement saying that starting the thread function i am sleeping for five seconds and i am printing thread function completed okay now if you recall my first topic where i said that i am going to prove you that python threads are real threads okay so before going ahead and creating a thread we must check how much threads are already there in this particular jupyter notebook handled by python we can use built-in function from threading called active count and if we just see the output of this it says that at this moment of time there are five threads which are handled by this particular Jupyter notebook okay we can see the similar information in the top command also let's go ahead and see that so what I'm gonna do is that I will first check the PID of uh, Jupyter notebook so at this moment of time there is only one kernel runtime and you can see this is the kernel runtime and the PID is 5079 well I will say top minus P 5079 okay I will change the interval to 0 0.5 and you know that if I press shift H it will tell me number of threads you can see that number of threads are total in 9 over here but here it is showing 5 why there is a difference Though it doesn't matter but the difference is because this talks about the complete Jupyter notebook and the kernel this talks about only the python part of it so python part five threads overall nine threads okay so at this moment of time there are nine threads so let's go ahead and create a thread okay to create a thread we will pass the thread function as a constructor parameter so I'm calling the class thread and I'm passing target as thread function. There are other parameters, but let's not worry about that because in this video, we want to understand the concept of threads, okay? Not the different parameters. I will create different video for that. So I am creating a thread, okay? Now, creation of thread doesn't mean thread is just started. You need to explicitly start the thread. And once you start the thread, and go ahead and see the active count it will show you six what was it earlier 
5 now it is showing 6 when the thread function is completed the active count will be 5 again now let's see the same thing in the top command so I am creating a thread okay I am not starting now in the top command I have total number of threads as 9 okay let me start this and you can see that total number of threads are now 10 and as soon as this exit happens total number of thread goes back to 9 so this thing is reflected in the operating system so this means python threads are real threads which means you can create threads in python okay confusion clear anyone talks about threads in python yes you can create threads in python no question about that and each python thread corresponds to a kernel level thread okay as we have seen in top command you can check anywhere every python thread will create a kernel thread okay now let's talk about some of the logistics uh, similar to other threads in other programming language you can join you can wait for thread to complete by calling a join so in here i create a thread i can say start and i can say join this cell will not be completed until and this thread function is completed okay we can do that again we can see that you know here star will be there which means this will keep on running till thread function is completed so join will wait for that particular thread to complete and this is the way you prevent your main program from exiting okay Now let's talk about the famous or infamous global interpreter lock. Now before I talk about GIL, let me clarify that I am talking about the official Python version called CPython. Okay, GIL might not be there in other Python implementation. Okay, so let's talk about GIL. So just wanted to read something from the CPython documentation. In due to global interpreter lock, only one thread can execute the Python code at once. Only one thread can execute the Python thread at once. So GIL is not saying that you can create only one thread. GIL is saying that you can execute only one thread. There is a difference. You can create multiple threads, but you can execute only one thread. Let's see the same thing in action. Now to visualize this concept, I had to create CPU intensive jobs, okay, not the network jobs or file reading jobs where multiple things can happen simultaneously. I have created CPU intensive jobs, which means that I have uh, created a variable called kill thread, uh, which is false and see my function. I have created a working thread in the while true loop. If kill thread is true, then return. Otherwise, you keep on looping in this particular thread function so this thread function will run as fast as possible okay so let's create multiple threads two threads and see what happens now before doing that let's uh, see that whether indeed my kill uh, thread function is working now active count is five let me start okay now if i go ahead and see top command you can see 10 threads and if i go ahead and say kill thread equal to true uh, then you will get back to 9 thread that means this logic is working if I change it in main thread the another thread will exit now what I have shown you over here I have changed kill thread the global variable in main thread not in another thread which means two threads are working okay things will be more interesting now let's create two threads okay, instead of one let's reset the value to false create thread one thread two start both the threads okay now in the top right now number of threads are nine if i create one more thread in top it will be 10 and if i do uh, active count it will be six over here i will start another one now in top it will be 11 and active count will be seven okay so things are working we have created multiple threads now this is the place where GIL comes into picture and this is the place where it is different from other programming languages okay let's see how it is now you can see that the CPU usage of these two threads combined to 100% okay just see I have uh, press one to show you all the cores but if I can show you the CPU usage, it's 50%, 50%. So at any point of time, 
CPU usage don't go beyond 100%. In my system right now, I have 12 cores, which means the CPU usage can go till 1200%. 100% means one core, okay? But you can see over here that the CPU usage remains 100%. It doesn't go beyond 100%, okay? Now let me stop the both threads by doing kill threads. And now nine threads are there. Now we have seen that in the case of Python, I created two threads. I run a while true loop in that both the threads, the CPU usage is still 100%. But what happens if I create two threads in a programming language where there is no concept of global interpreter law? Well, so let's go ahead and talk about C++ programming language and in here I have created a file called thread2.cpp. So in here I have created two thread, same thing, exactly same, no difference. The code which I have written in Python, the same code I have written over here, just that I am not using any variable, okay? So let me go ahead and compile this code and run it, okay? I am running a dot out. Okay. Now in here, uh, let me go back and see the PID of C++ program. The PID is 26722. Let's see this. Stop minus P 26722. Change the duration to 0.5. And if I do shift H, you know there are two threads right now working. And you can see that CPU usage is 200% approximately. You can see that two cores are occupied. CPU, uh, their cores are changing, but at any point of time, two cores are occupied, which means both cores are working simultaneously. In case of Python with multiple threads, half of the time, first thread was running, half of the time, second thread was running, but overall combined strength of both the threads never crossed 100%. So in Python, if I end up creating 12 threads, CPU usage will remain 100%. In C++, if I create 12 threads, CPU usage will go 1200%. I hope and believe that you understand what global interpreter log does. Okay, so global interpreter log let you run multiple threads, but at any point of time, only one thread will be working. So in case of Python, if you are creating multiple threads, CPU intensive jobs will not have any impact. But if there are other jobs like, you know, network reading, file reading, uh, I mean, uh, user input, microservices, uh, connecting to a web server and getting some data back. In those cases, CPU usage is not 100% by each of the thread because it has to wait for network input disk input and those things are slower as compared to CPU which means CPU will be free and which means if you create multiple threads it will be helpful for you to run your code faster in Python. Now if you really want to understand think of this as you know before multi-core CPUs came into picture how your multi-threaded applications was working it will work in a same way in Python multi-threading, okay? So even if you create multiple threads in Python, it will treat your CPU as a single core CPU. That's all, okay? And that's why if you really want to use multiple cores, you need to use multi-processing, not multi-threading. And remember, this is helpful only if you are using CPU intensive jobs like, you know, uh, calculation, um, secret key calculation, hash calculation, and so on and so forth. Just a very simple example of multiprocessing. You import multiprocessing and you import process from multiprocessing. In case of thread, we imported threading, thread from threading. In case of multiprocessing, we will import process from multiprocessing. The APIs are similar. We can create a process function similar to that of our threading functions. Now I am going to show you one demo, but uh, remember this warning never write any multiprocessing code like this. Okay, so I'm creating two process proc and proc2. I'm starting first process. Okay, I'm starting second process. And now if I go ahead and see the top command, sorry, let me open for the Jupyter notebook itself. 
um, it will not come in thread thread will be 9 but if you see the CPU there will be two CPU two cores will be utilized 100% which was not there which was not possible with single Python application or multi-threaded Python application okay now if I go ahead and terminate both process we will close all the proc handles so that you know uh, handle memory is reduced and things are closed um, properly now we will talk about multi-processing later on but let's come to the last topic of this video is all about how to create object oriented threads or object oriented way of creating threads right so what you can do is that you can create your class derived from thread and you can create a run function okay so this is my thread and currently again active count is 5 i can create the thread my thread and if i call a start so remember whether you are calling a thread directly or you know deriving the thread to create your own class to start a thread you need to call the start function what start function will do is that it will call the run function which you have created in your class so in here i will start the thread at active count is six wait for five seconds the thread should exit and active count will be five okay just like raw threads we can actually join also you can see a star over here it will wait for five seconds and then this star will go off and active count will remain five so this was the basic introduction about multi-threading in python we will talk more about multi-threading in upcoming videos thank you everyone thanks for watching we will meet again until the next time we meet good day goodbye you take care